I hope I can finish this in one sitting. I hope so. So way back when I was searching for card battles, I accidentally triggered the first cinematic for the Jade Chamber quest. So let's just continue with it. <laughs> okay, here we are. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was gonna... Oh, here's Shen, huh? <laughs> well, will you look at that, ma'am? Nowhere left to run. Huh? What did she do? Don't worry. We're not bad guys. You give us some mora. We give you a little info. Everybody's a winner. Wait, what's happening? Boss, I got a bad feeling about this. Look at her, the, the white hair, the, the energy she gives off. I, I'm telling you, there, there's something different about her. Yeah, you better be careful in confronting her. So what? She's loaded. How are we ever going to repay those gambling debts if we just let money walk away from us, huh? Gambling debts? I've already told you. I don't need your information. Mm. If you still can't grasp that, I'm happy to repeat it in a way that won't be so easy to forget. Uh-oh. Uh, come on, ma'am. You seem like an intelligent lady. I shouldn't have to spell this out to you. It's not about whether you need the info or not, okay? It's about you taking out your money and handing it over and nobody getting hurt. Is she held hostage at this point? I don't know. I won't. No more excuses. <sighs> I know you have money. I saw you. Mm. Yeah, I saw you strolling into Leo Lee Pavilion, ordering a table full of food and only taking a few bites. Then she knew a kiosk, then Wanmin restaurant. Same story each time. You order all the signature dishes, take a few bites, then you're on your way again. How could you afford to be so wasteful if you weren't from a rich family? And since you're so rich, what's the loss to you in giving us a little spare change, huh? Oh no. These guys are kind of really sketchy. <sighs> Master warned me not to lay a hand on anyone in Liyue Harbor. But here we are. Hmm, perhaps... Uh, yes. Let's call it fate. Uh-oh, you guys are in big trouble. Boss, I'm telling you something's not right. Yeah, you better leave now. What are you afraid of? We're just selling information. It's not illegal. If she lays a finger on us, all the better. We'll sue her for everything she's worth. And they're trying to intimidate people into doing business. Oh. You again. Millilith? What, what, what are the Millilith doing here? Did you do this? <clears throat> you ought to mind your own business, I swear! And what are you gonna do? Silence! How dare you threaten innocent civilians? You're coming with us. <laughs> no, no, don't, 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 don't be angry, sir. P p p please, let me explain. Yeah, you have better explaining to do. Okay, are you all right? Shen he. Okay, that's your name, right? It's it's, it's exactly your name. Shen he. Yeah. My name. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I haven't never asked, but okay. Thanks. Oh, so your name's Shen he. Hainan's name is well, Hainan, and this is Hainan's travel buddy. Hmm. <laughs> I've heard about you two before. <sighs> Thank you for helping to defuse the situation. Uh, I could have dealt with it myself, though. <sighs> I suspect smashing his head against the ground a handful of times is all it would have taken to get him to surrender. Yeah, you can do it, but you have to restrain yourself. <gasps> you can't do that. That's way too violent. This is Lila Harbor. There are laws against that kind of stuff, you know. Laws. 
Have you not heard of the law, Shenhe? No, apparently not. Hmm, that's kind of strange. Okay, I really am curious about her backstory. Although I'm not aware of her backstory at all. Um, what was that noise? That would be my stomach growling. Oh. Hmm, I haven't eaten enough. Oh, sure. You're hungry. Okay. She's so honest. <laughs> Wait, that's right. They said you went around all the restaurants ordering this and that and the other, but only took a small bite of each dish. I don't know if you're on a diet or something. Okay. Then of course you're still hungry. So? Anything in particular you're hungry for? <laughs> hmm. Chingson, glaze lily, violet grass. These are my usuals. Okay, so you're like Ganyu. Okay, I get it. You're both adeptus, adepti, something? Hmm. Medicinal herbs? Kind of hard to explain. Mm. Anyway, Bubu Pharmacy's not far away. Let's take Shenha there. For a big medicinal meal. Okay, big medicinal meal. After all, you can't work on an empty stomach. But I'm pretty sure Paimon would like a honey roast. I I'm guessing. Do you think Shenha might be an adeptus? Of course she is. Seems like it's her first time in Liyue Harbor, and she doesn't seem to get how things work here. She is an adeptus. That would explain everything. Where does she fit in with the other adepti, though? Hmm. I'm super curious. Yeah, I'm curious too. Are you here to buy some herbs? I do hope you brought your prescription. Um, it's for Shenha. She's hungry. Chingsen, glaze lily, and violet grass, please. Half a pound of each. God. He's buy she's buying a a crate load. Oh no, not exactly. What kind of prescription is this? Sounds more like a lunch order. <laughs> oh, here you go. That's everything we have in stock. What? That's it? Okay, that was kinda easy. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> she's really eating them. Oh wow, she's really eating. Oh, okay. My hunger has now abated. Hm, thank you. Yeah, um... Are they really that good? Hm, rather awful. Okay, thank you to be honest, because... I wouldn't be eating those. Though they were not completely devoid of sweet fragrance, after consuming a large quantity of them, bitterness is all that remains. Okay. Mm-hmm. If Paimon had enough Mora, Paimon would go to the fanciest restaurant in town and order a whole table of food and eat it all in one go. Yeah, basic Paimon. She's gonna gobble all of those food in one sitting. Sheesh. Because I'm not sure whether I will remain here in the future. What? Hmm. The food of the mortal realm is most delicious. But should I return to the mountains, yearning for the food here shall only pose an obstacle to my continued spiritual development. Hmm, okay. Sampling each dish in order to appreciate its taste is enough. Okay. Return to the mountains. That proves it. Paimon knew she was an adeptus. Mm, enough about me. What are your plans from here? We came out to take part in the Rebuild the Jade Chamber competition! Oh, is this really a competition? I never thought, I never knew of that. Okay. And, and now we're probably super behind because we've been held up for so long. Hmm, I see. I heard something about the contest when I was passing by. <laughs> yep! You get to ask Ningguang any question you want if you win! Oh, so basically she haven't 
uh, conversed with Ningguang ever. Were you interested in the contest too, Shenhe? Hmm. I came for the rebuilding of the Jade Chamber, but until this point, I had no intention of joining a contest. Hmm. So she just might be spectating at this point. However, you have shown me your kindness, and I would now like to lend you my assistance. Oh, don't worry. I ask for nothing in return. Okay. That's good. Wow. You really don't have to. But having an Adeptus help out will make things a whole lot easier, so... Yeah, we welcome you to our team. <laughs> then let's not delay. I have a plan. Ooh, okay. Great! Paimon bets this is gonna be the awesomest plan ever! <laughs> mm, I am not sure whether or to what extent this plan can be classified as awesome. I do, however, believe it will be highly effective. We simply need to dispose of everyone who is currently ahead of us. Then, we alone shall become the victors. What the... Oh no, that's not how it's supposed to be. Oh boy. Mito! That is not acceptable! Not by a long shot! She just wanted blood! Why? <laughs> really? But I hear that competition is in essence about conflict and one-upmanship. No, it's not. It's a friendly competition. It's a healthy competition, not a bloody competition. I was wondering who I could hear arguing over there. So, it's you. Oh, hi, Baiju. Where's Chi Chi, by the way? Baiju? What are you doing out here? Lady Ningguang wishes to purchase a large batch of wound dressing. We're running low at the store, so I came out to fetch the ingredients personally. Hmm. Batch of wound dressing? What happened? Much wound dressing all of a sudden. Yeah, exactly. I'm not too sure. I did hear she's looking to rebuild the Jade Chamber. Maybe for its first aid on site? I didn't ask, though. Far be it from me to pry into my customer's personal affairs. Yeah, probably. Oh, and she also borrowed Chi Chi. Oh. Meaning Boo Boo Pharmacy is very short-handed right now. I don't suppose any of you are looking for part-time work by any chance? I wonder what will be Ningguang's use for Chi Chi at this time. What will, what will she be she doing? No, no. We've got other stuff to do. Um, while you're here though, you seem to know a lot. Have you ever heard of something called Sunset Vermilionite? Ah, the variety of plostrite used in the Jade Chamber, yes? There is some mention of it in the Seven Mountain Treatises. When activated, Sunset Vermilionite rises up all the way into the clouds. It's very rare indeed. As far as the records show, virtually all Sunset Vermilionite in existence has been mined and taken possession of. But... The Feiyun Commerce Guild would know far more about this than I do. Okay then, let's go ask at the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Thanks, Baiju. You're quite welcome. Good luck to you all. And if there's anything further you need from me, just come to the Boo Boo Pharmacy. Okay, hey, where's Sincho? Oh, he's not even here. Master Sincho, thank oh. goodness you're finally back. Oh, there he is. Oh, why do I detect an urgency in your voice? The guild has had a whole string of strange orders in recently. Everyone's been completely caught off guard. 
Your father gave me specific instructions to ask you to stay and help out if I happen to see you. I see. Have someone sort the orders by type for now. I'll deal with them myself shortly. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you, Master. With you on the job, I can breathe a sigh of relief. Hey, Xingqiu. Glad you're here. We want to ask you for some information. Traveler, Paimon, please wait a moment. Shu, I need to entertain some guests. Please continue with your work for the time being, and we'll discuss the matter of the guild's orders in more detail later on. Understood, Master Xingqiu. Then I will leave you in peace. I wasn't counting on finding you here today. What's going on? And how, pray tell, may I be of service? About the sacred rocks? Xingqiu, have you ever heard of Sunset Vermilionite? Oh, I see. So you've entered Lady Ningguang's contest as well. As well? Do you mean... Oh, every yeah, I mean, everybody will be involved in this competition. The truth is, the Feiyun Commerce Guild is in possession of some Sunset Vermilionite, but only one piece. What? Only one piece? Oh, okay. So this rock is very rare. We are holding it on behalf of someone who has asked us to put it up for auction. And a lot of interested parties have already come to us inquiring about the price. Oh, okay. At the end of the day, it all comes down to supply and demand. In this case, I'm guessing the final transaction price may be in excess of 500 million mora. 500 million mora. Oh my god, for just the, that one rock. That's so expensive. 500 million? Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, I don't think I can afford it. Honestly, I would recommend that you don't bother bidding on this one. The price is greatly inflated. And it's just not worth it. I bet Child will be betting on it. He has more mora than any of us have. But without any sunset vermilionite. Don't panic. I don't suppose you ever heard of Sea Gazer? Hmm, is this an alternative rock? Who? Oh no. I thought it was a I thought it was a rock. I think it's a person, I guess. Seagazer was once very close to Mountain Shaper, but if I am not mistaken, he has already passed away. Oh, he's an, ad an adeptus. Okay, just like Cloud Retainer. Yes, precisely. I didn't know anyone else knew about him. According to records of drifting clouds, Seagazer once built an abode to store his rarest and most exquisite treasures, among which was some sunset vermilionite. Hmm, okay. After Seagazer passed, the abode was abandoned, and its location was lost to time. So what happened to the Vermilionite? Luckily, I came into possession of a stack of folk history books just recently. They make some oblique references to this lost abode, and after cross-referencing them against each other, I'm now fairly certain that it is situated in the Leisha area. Hmm, so are we gonna find it? That's great! for us to just go and take his treasure i mean without any obstacles i guess but i think there'll be numerous ones wouldn't it be a little you know disrespectful with him being an adeptist <laughs> i don't know if it if he would would not mind that at all okay you needn't worry as far as i understand seagazer was very open-minded even while he was alive, he wouldn't have let something like this bother him. Okay. It's kind of reassuring. But we have to be on guard. Open-minded? I have not heard of Seagazer being described in this way before. May I ask where you read that? Just a rumor I heard out in the mountains. <sighs> All right, then. Let's go. Hmm. There's something about this young lady that reminds me of a good friend of mine. It's Chongyu! Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. Adepti abodes tend to have very ingenious designs, especially when it comes to their defense mechanisms. Plus, it's likely to be crawling with monsters after being abandoned for so long. So please, be very careful. Well, I'm kind of expecting it. Okay, we 
we will be. Thanks, Shincho. Ooh, okay. Let's just glide way over there and not fall. Let's see. Shincho said it should be around here, but Paimon doesn't see anything. Yeah, but, but I bet she does. was hidden using a special Adepti art. But now that I have removed it, we can inspect the area more closely. Okay, that was cool. <laughs> wow, that's amazing! Yep, let's take another look around! Hey, look! Is that a new ceiling over there? Hey! Okay, let's follow it. The city is kind of moving erratically. So, hmm. Okay, we're going down this. Oh! Oh my goodness! Uh, fine. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So, recommended elements. Aha! So, I've been eating Cryo Geo and Pyro. So, for now, I'm going to use. Let's try to use my, fav my favorite. Hmm. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, what? Were we at a waterfall just now? How did we suddenly end up here? Oh, so many clouds. It feels like we're high up in the sky. Hmm. I believe this is the abode of that Adeptus. Oh. Yeah, figures. With any luck, the sunset vermilionite we're looking for should be in here. Really? Let Paimon see! Huh? Isn't that the ceiling from before? Look, it's gone and snuck beneath the clouds! And now that Paimon takes a closer look, the rocks and trees here don't seem complete. Oh, could there be something below the clouds? Yeah, what do you think, Shen, huh? These are not real clouds. They are the product of an Adepti art used for spatial partitioning. Mm, okay. If we want to go down, we must first destroy the mechanism that is maintaining the Adepti art. All right, then let's do it. I sense the presence of monsters in this place. I don't know where they are hiding, so we'd better be careful. Oh, so in the, they are in stealth mode. Woo, I'm gonna use Shenha right now. Okay. Hmm. Wait, how can I get there? Can I glide? Oh, I can okay. I thought I'm gonna I thought I'm just gonna fall. Okay, I'm just, just, just gonna. Oh! I forgot. There we go. What is this? Hmm. Oh, it's nothing. Oh! Okay. Okay, I remember now.
Oh, we're gonna go back. Okay, we're gonna we got to do a deal with that nail. We must deactivate all of these first. It's much easier using Claymore. Okay. Can I drift up? Oh, there you go. Okay. Go on to the next. Oh, that's it? It appears that we've been taken for intruders. This time, why not allow me to take care of this? Okay. Okay, let's buff you first. Now's our chance. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Is everyone okay? Oh, Cecilia disappeared beneath the cliff again. That needle take care of it. Further down. But before that, let's destroy the guard mechanisms on this level first. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Ruin guard time. Again? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, ooh. Luckily there was a pool of water at the bottom. Sheesh. Otherwise, that could have ended very differently. <laughs> Okay, wait. Hmm. Let's just move slowly but surely. Okay, let's touch it. Okay. Can I touch it again just to put it way more further? Okay. Woo! <laughs> Geocedia. Okay, can I move this again? 
The rock does not. Oh, okay. So where am I supposed to go now? Hmm. Oh, there's another door. Okay, push it a little further. Okay, there's another door over here. Let's just make sure. Can I push it further? Okay, there's a... That's it. Now there are two doors. Okay, let's just push this one first. Ooh. Let's push it further. Can I push this one? Okay. Goes... Oh! Am I getting trapped? I think not. Okay. Destroy it. Taking too long. I don't know why. There you go. Woo! Ouch. Ouch, ouch. That hurts. Okay, let's just come on. Oh no, there's there's two of them. Ouch! Oh my gosh! Come on! I don't have a shield. There we go. Uh oh, what's happening? I mean, every storyline or every cutscene, there's always boulders, rocks or boulders that are falling apart. Okay. I can climb this. Wait. Oh, there's a silly. <laughs> okay, let's follow it. Oh. It sure is. There's a chest. I knew it. Oh, just two. That's fine. Oh, can I sit? Yep, that's it. So it's a jade chamber. That's true, but then again, why isn't it floating? 
Good point. Paul's trait doesn't float until it's activated. It may look different from most ordinary stones, but it weighs around the same amount. Okay. Only after being activated does Plostrite reveal its true nature, breaking free from the shackles of the mortal realm and ascending up into the heavens. Mm. Wow, Shenha. You seem to know everything about this. Of course she's an adept time. Only because my master is fond of chatting about these things. The moment she has some time to spare, she'll come straight for me and start telling story after story. <laughs> it's Clavit saying it. I don't care for her stories most of the time. I certainly didn't expect them to ever come in handy like this. I wonder who his master is? It's Clavit saying it. Hold on a sec. Paimon just realized something. If we activate it here, there's no way we'll be able to get it back to the site, right? Heck, we'll be dragged up into the sky too! Um, I don't think we'll be needing that much. I don't know. Or or possibly they will be needing a, a large chunk of it. Okay, that makes sense. But if we don't activate it, how else are we gonna lift it? This rock must weigh well over a thousand pounds, surely. Don't worry. I can handle the weight quite easily. What? Really? Wow. Are you sure? Uh, be careful. Yeah, I wonder how she could lift that way big of a chunk of that rock. Please don't worry. I'm well aware that a plostrite sample this large must be highly valuable. I will be gentle with it and make sure it does not get damaged. Yeah, it's your safety you have to be careful of. My safety? Yeah. That's right! I'm unsure you can handle it and everything, but if something this heavy lands on you, you're gonna get yourself hurt, no matter who you are. You gotta be extra careful when lifting heavy objects. It's just common sense! <laughs> yes, exactly. Hmm. Is it now? Hmm. Well then, thank you. I don't know how I feel about Shenha's way of thinking. I just don't get it. Or maybe I will just we're just underestimating her powers? Well, maybe. I'll go on ahead with the Plostrite. Let's meet at the building site later. How is Shenha able to carry that huge rock all by herself? Huh. Adepti super strength much? We can't slow down yet. Let's go meet her at the building site. How did she how did she lift that up? Lift it up. I don't know. Oh wow. She's very strong. I mean, Edel can carry it, I guess, but that kind of strength is wow. It's very amazing to be honest. Oh my god, I can't believe my eyes. How? I don't know. How did she manage to carry that? Oh my goodness. How can she lift that massive rock all by herself? She's got to be one of those Adepti, surely. Yeah, I mean, she's an Adepti, but can you imagine carrying that? I don't know. Oh, mighty Adeptus, please give me your blessing so that in the coming year I may reap a more bountiful salary. Oh, <laughs> okay. Hope they hear you. This is top tier in size and quality, and the condition it's in is quite simply immaculate. Congratulations. This item is approved for submission. Obviously, it's way too qualified for the submission. I mean, look at how big it is. I'm going
going to award you full marks for the Sunset Vermilionite item. <laughs> May I take your name? My name isn't important. I'm not even here to compete. Whoa, okay. But you're on our team. Um, okay. I was just delivering this for some other people. They should be here any minute now. Shenhe, and Ningguang's little helper. No, oh, there you go. That's her name. So you're the ones behind this. No wonder. The rarest talent turns in the rarest plastrite specimen. <laughs> but I have to correct you on one point. It's not helper. It's secretary. Okay, okay. It's secretary. Okay, I get it. <laughs> okay then, Miss Secretary. What do you think of the rock we found? Pretty amazing, right? It's not only really amazing, it's humongous. In truth. It is the finest piece of plastrite we have received so far. If everything goes according to plan, we will use this piece in the foundation of the Jade Chamber, which will enable us to proceed to the next stage of construction. As a side note, Lady Ningguang has rented some dwellings in the nearby area to serve as accommodations for the contestants. If you need a place to rest, you are welcome to stay there. Okay, that's good. Now, please excuse me. As you can see, there is still a lot of work to do on the building site. Shenhe, Shenhe. Just now on the way over, pretty much everyone was singing your praises. Oh, really? No, oh, she doesn't mind at all. Okay. What kind of reaction is that? So strange. Aren't you happy about it? He's kind of devoid of any emotional... I don't know. Whenever Paimon gets praise, Paimon can't help but hold their head up high and break into a big smug smile. <laughs> As always. I've had similar compliments before. Mm -hmm. They call me an adeptus, treat me with great deference and respect, as if I'm set apart from the common folk. Hmm, so you feel not really like an outcast, but a kind of revered um, entity or something. Yeah, because that's how adept I are. At least the ones we've met are pretty unique and reclusive, too. Way different than normal people. But I am not. Shanna? Uh... Mm. Are you all right? I'm fine. I've been exerting myself quite a lot ever since we set foot in that abode. Uh, I'm just a little fatigued. Of course you are, handling that big boulder. What? Um, well, Byron said that there are some makeshift hotels we can use, right? Let's go check in and take a rest. Yeah, that would be great. <sighs> no need. I simply need to find myself a secluded place in the wilderness to sit and meditate in silence. Okay. You can't do that. It's dangerous out in the wild on your own. Yeah, she could handle it pretty well, I guess. When you're hungry, you go eat something tasty. And when you're tired, you go lie down in a nice, comfy bed. Alright? Seriously, don't punish yourself like this. Yeah, I mean... You can stay there. Okay. If you insist. Great! Now we're talking. Let's head to our hotel. Where is it? Oh, so what? It's way up here. Oh, it's over there. Ooh. Okay, this is a quite a nice abode, I guess. Checking in, are we? 
You're just in time. We only have two rooms left. Since this was chosen as the building site for the new Jade Chamber, we've had a constant stream of people in this area. And not just workers, either. Visitors, business people, tea sellers, all sorts. So, business is booming for me today. Very few vacancies. You're lucky you got here when you did. Great! One of your rooms is still being cleaned. I, I guess it should be ready within the hour. The other room is just at the door on the left. Okay. Here are your keys. All right. Hope you enjoy your stay. Please excuse me. I'll leave you to it. Sure, huh? You should go get some rest. We'll hang around outside until the other room's ready. Hyman's gonna go see if there's anything good to eat around here. <laughs> Hyman couldn't help but notice one of the guests walk in with a huge grilled chicken drumstick before. Yeah, typical Paimon. Always craving for food. <laughs> Let's buy one for Shenhua too. She can have it as a midnight snack. Or save it for breakfast tomorrow. <sighs> All right. I will head to my room for now. If you need anything, don't hesitate to disturb me. I'm a light sleeper. I will hear if you knock on the door. Okay, have a good rest. Mm hmm. See you tomorrow. Hello there. Let's go and say hi. Huh? Hello there, beautiful bird. Hi. I kind of miss you. One trusts you have met Shen He. So, are you getting along quite well? So far, so good. Yeah. So, you know Shen He too, Cloud Retainer? Naturally. Save for Ganyu, who spends the majority of her time in Liyue Harbor. All the Adepti living today are acquainted with Shen He, to some degree. Cool! So, what's her Adeptus name anyway? Hmm, okay. I don't remember Ganyu having an Adeptus name, I don't know. Calling her Shen He feels kind of friendly, but also kind of disrespectful. So Paimon's thinking, maybe it'd be better if we called her by her Adeptus name instead! Hmm. Her Adeptus name? Why, pray tell, would Shen He have an Adeptus name? Yeah. Shen is fine. Uh, don't all Adepti have a special title they go by? On this latter point, you are correct. However, Shen He is human. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, okay. Let's continue. Oh, never, oh, okay, I'm kind of confused right now. So, I thought so? Huh? What? You knew already? <sighs> so is Paimon the only one who didn't know? Do you mean to say that she presents differently from ordinary human beings? Well, to start with, her problem-solving methods are... Extremely direct. Ah, oh, yes. She was like this all those years ago when one first met her. In this respect, she has not changed. One first found Shanha by chance in a cave. One was passing by and sensed the presence of a god's remains. Being of an ever vigilant disposition, one entered immediately to inspect the scene. Inside was Shen He, then aged around six years old. In her hand, she held a dagger with which she was confronting a monster that was the god's remains incarnate. Hmm, okay, I'm kind of getting... 
Shenhe's origins, I guess. That sounds so dangerous. When one arrived, she had already been locked in confrontation with this monster for several days. Most mortal children are fragile, both physically and mentally, and are highly reliant on their parents for survival, but not so her. That she was able to endure such terrible danger was due not only to her strong willpower, but also to the bloodlust and homicidal instinct with which she was born. One dealt with the monster, yet she still refused to lower her guard. She even pointed her dagger in one's direction and remained ready to strike. Only after she was satisfied, that one had no intention to cause her harm, did she finally relent. She then passed out without uttering a single word. In other words, if you hadn't passed by that day, Shenhe might have... Yeah, Shenhe might probably have been in a lot of trouble. Not necessarily. Upon one's arrival, one could sense that the god's wrath was gradually receding, even had the stalemate continued. One suspects that Shen He may have still emerged the victor of the confrontation. Oh. So in her early as a child, she's really, really strong. That's still so dangerous though. Why was a tiny little kid battling against the wrath of a god in the first place? Alas, the mortal world is rife with suffering of every kind. And she had experienced her fair share of this even at a tender age. Seeing that she was homeless, one decided to adopt her. Yeah, she'll be so obviously Cloud Retainer is her master. Indeed. It is one to whom she refers. Xian He has an extraordinary constitution, making her well adapted to practicing the Adepti arts. All the Adepti cherished her talents, and so we were willing to train her. However, her homicidal urges did not subside with age. Rather, they grew stronger day by day. That's what I'm talking about, her homicidal urges. Oh my god. Man. Mooncarver once performed a divination for her. He declared that her fate is to bear the curse of calamity. Consumed by malevolent energy. She is prone to bring harm to those around her. Such is the magnitude of the danger this poses, that her soul must be bound with red ropes to keep her homicidal instinct at bay. Oh, wow. The red ropes have indeed served to keep her calmer and more content. They also seem to have rendered her somewhat inexpressive. Perhaps the red ropes are so powerful that they have suppressed some of her other emotions as well. Yeah, so that's the reason why she is really emotionless at this point. It is only by fate that people's paths may cross. Now that Shen He's path has crossed with yours, Please be sure to treasure the gift that fate has given you, and take good care of her. Yeah, we'll, sh we'll, we'll surely will. Oh, now Paimon gets it. You came out here to check up on Shenhe because you were worried about her, didn't you? Huh. You dare draw such a facile conclusion on the nature of one's present excursion. Incorrect. The truth is that while Liyue Harbor may seem peaceful today, danger is always lurking in the shadows. Ningguang once made a bold assertion that this is to be the era of the contract between Liyue and the humans. Well, one is most curious to observe how she will respond to the coming storm. If she handles it admirably, one is willing to be a witness to her achievements. But if she does not, the Adepti shall not hesitate to seize control. Hmm, okay. Let us conclude our conversation here for today. 
One has occupied enough of your time, and night is approaching. Be sure to get ample rest. So, Shenhua isn't an Adeptus after all. She just grew up around the Adepti. Oh, no wonder she doesn't like being treated as an Adeptus. Having everyone falling over themselves to show their respect all the time must be kind of hard to deal with. Yeah, exactly. Um, hey, so, Shenhua. Master has relayed my situation to you, I take it. Oh? How did you know? I'd intended to wait until you came back before going to sleep, but I didn't hear you come in. <laughs> I was worried that something may have happened to you, so I went outside to check and caught sight of my master. Yeah, I saw you walked out of the of your room, so on top of this, you have been acting very strangely around me this morning, causing me to suspect that my master must have told you everything about me. Yeah, maybe too many too many information. After all, master is very talkative. <laughs> yeah, she really is, she really is. was wrong it's okay i don't mind the fault is mine for not explaining everything to you sooner because in my experience trying to explain is a futile pursuit still though you mistook me for an adeptus you never treated me as distant and unapproachable instead you treated me as you would a friend mm -hmm. for this i am very grateful indeed Okay, so I don't know if she's okay. She's 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 very beautiful, but there are a lot more. I don't know. There are a lot more incoming characters that be more beautiful than her. I don't know. To be fair, we've met our fair share of real adepti too. Anyway, now it's settled. From now on, you're our friend. Whether you're an adeptus or a human isn't the important thing. First and foremost, we're just plain old friends. Got it. Although I don't know quite what it entails in terms of what I have to do, I must say I like the title friend very much indeed. Great! Well, now that we're all rested up, we should start searching for the other two items on the list. But before we do that, Let's go to the building site and ask Ningguang's little helper how the progress is going. After all, Sunset Vermilionite is so rare. Paimon doubts many competitors will really be able to find any. If it turns out some of them have given up already, we'll be able to take things a little more slowly. Oh, and another thing. We bought some grilled chicken drumsticks on the way back last night. There was a place just outside. Here's one for you, Shenhua. Try it. They're so good. I concur. It has a rich flavor. Far more agreeable than those I've cooked for myself in the wilderness in the past. It's floating already? Um, but it seems to be tied down by something. Oh, wow. That's because it's not finished. Hey, Violin! And hey, Beto! And hey! Um, person Paimon doesn't know? It's Yunjin! Given the enormous scale of the Jade Chamber, we split the construction work into two phases to make sure the structure remains balanced. Before we find some suitable plostrite, we build the Jade Chamber's keel at ground level. Once the plostrite is ready, we place it into the keel and let the partially constructed Jade Chamber rise up to the height of the surrounding mountain peaks. 
The remainder of the construction work is then carried out at that altitude. Once everything is ready, we release the iron tethers and allow the Jade Chamber to rise to its target altitude. Miss Bywin, we've brought some new materials to submit. One moment, I'll be right there. The construction work has only been able to progress this rapidly thanks to the plostrite provided by you. Lady Ning Wong is most grateful and looks forward to seeing more of your work. Wow, can't believe you sourced the plostrite so quickly. It's the key piece of the puzzle. Looks like you beat us to the punch. The <laughs> engine is really cute. Fatal? You're joining the Jade Chamber contest too? <laughs> sure am. I happened to get my hands on a chunk of Sunset Vermilionite on a voyage a while back, so I figured I'd bring it over. So how large it is? It, I guess it, I guess it's it's kind of small. Huh. So even though it's rare, we're not the only ones who managed to get a hold of it. <laughs> oh, I've got some introductions to do. This is the renowned Miss Yun, or Yun Jin, probably the most famous figure in the Liyue opera scene. Greetings. Hello. These two are Paimon and the Traveler, both good buddies of mine. And this is... Um, sorry, I'm not sure we've met. Yeah, probably not. Shenhe. I am their... friend. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Good to meet you. A friend of a friend is my friend too. Or, as I like to say, a mate of a crewmate is part of the crew. Miss Yoon is also here for the contest. Turns out she needed to borrow a boat, so we came together. It's an honor to finally meet you both. I've heard much about you. Miss Shenhe, though we are only meeting for the first time, I have a feeling that we will get along very well indeed. Ooh. Okay, so I don't know, I kind of, okay, I don't remember any interaction between them prior to this, because I haven't, I've already started this quest timeline. To be honest with you all, I am in great need of this opportunity to ask Lady Ningguang a question. That's why I joined the contest. Thanks to my father's connections, I was able to acquire a specimen of the plostrite required. Fortunately, it was approved for submission, despite being a little on the diminutive side. Wow! So it looks like the three of us are competitors now! Oh, why are you so concerned? It's just a friendly competition! Excuse me for prying, Miss Shenhe, but are you competing as well? No, she, she's just helping, not necessarily, but she's on our team, technically. No, I don't have any questions for Ning Wong. I just wanted to help him win. Okay, fair enough. In that case, I have a proposal to make. Okay, what is it? Lady Ning Wong said that the first three contestants to procure all three materials will be awarded the chance to ask a question. Well, there are three teams here. We can split the prize between us. Okay, what are you up to? This is interesting. Instead of competing against each other, we could work together to secure the top three places between us. What do you think? Hmm, so what's in it for us? Sounds great, but how does it change things exactly? Yeah, I mean, will Ning Wong be able to approve that? <laughs> I think I see where you're going with this, Miss Yoon. The plostrite was the most difficult item to source by a long shot. Luckily, all three of us managed to get our hands on it. The two remaining items aren't quite so rare, so as long as one of us finds a way to source it, the other two can hop on the bandwagon. Okay, okay. How'd I do? Is that what you had in mind? Yeah, probably. Precisely. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> huh. Interesting approach. Okay then. Alright, I'll go first. I have some leads on these wonder cores. From what I've heard, the core itself is really not that difficult to make. The hard part is getting hold of the ore used as raw materials. 
I'm gonna head back to the ship and ask Su Ling if he's heard of them. You guys... We will head into town and seek advice from Master Zhang of Hanfeng's Ironmongers. Thoughts? Okay, you can trust Master Zhang's smithing skills. Wonderful. We'll split into teams then, and whoever makes progress first brings all of us a step closer to victory. So we're not really entirely competing to each other right now. I'm gonna take off. See you later. Okay, let's go. Sounds like a good plan. By the way, what question are you gonna ask Ningguang Yunjin? I'm looking for a venue to host the performance of our new opera. Lady Ningguang has excellent judgment, so I would like to hear her opinion. Hmm, okay. Ooh, what's the opera called? Paima wants to go see it. The opera is a labor of love by my father. He wrote it based on a popular urban legend about an evil spirit and an adeptus. Oh, it's about Shenha. Okay, okay. It's called The Divine Damsel of Devastation. Yeah, I remember now. I remember the cutscene. 